you guys have probably done all of this and it's, you know, something in your, in your back pocket, you don't have to really think about it anymore. But I've done this for the first time recently, which was to measure the noise figure of a low noise amplifier. One of the last projects I wanted to do before we put our neutral hydrogen receiver back together up on our, our 8.5 meter dish up at uh, our country property at Heathcote was to fully qualify the low noise amplifier and uh, determine accurately its gain plus a noise figure, something I'd never managed to measure before. The This is the radio astronomy supplies item. A lot of you might be familiar with this. Um, I've modified it slightly as I might have mentioned in the past by putting a gasket in there, a different top lid and, a, and an air vent, one of these gore vents to help uh, waterproof this thing in the in the weather. Uh, there was signs of water deterioration in the previous assembly of that. So hopefully this vent will stop that in the future. Certainly experience has shown that it does. Um, so this wonderful device uh, has a terrific noise figure of 0.29 dB. So it'd be nice to see if it was possible to measure that. And uh, my report is detailing how the process was done. And I can't claim um, authorship of the methodology. I found it on a YouTube video clip from a quite a ex expert microwave engineer who does this sort of thing in his own laboratory. And he has a 20 minute clip where he explains how it's done. So the, when I talk about the um, low noise amplifier, it's not going to be measured on its own. Remember there's that switch that we decided to put in front of it so we could switch the noise source in and out. So really we're going to be measuring the noise figure of the low noise amplifier and the impact of this additional loss that we put in front of the low noise amplifier. So this is the physical hardware that I'm going to be measuring. So the original uh, radio astronomy supplies LNA is there, and then it's coupled through to this relay, RF relay, very low loss relay, 0.2 dB loss in that relay. So all of these connectors, the relay and the LNA is what we're going to be measuring the noise figure of. And the methodology is based on gain method. Um, gain measurement of the gain of the amplifier accurately and then measurement of the noise output power of the amplifier and it's it's based on a formula and i give a little bit of a background in the mathematics in the video clip provided by this um uh, stephen what's his name at the end of the end of the report i give his name stephen stephen remillard remillard he's an american so he um provides a lot more detail in the mathematics going back to some first principle equations but it ends up just being this logarithm at the end that formula number three where you've just got to measure the noise power in dbm the gain of the amplifier in db and then this fixed constant which is the room temperature of a, a 50 ohm load that you use as a substitute uh, at the input of the amplifier when you're measuring the noise power so I won't go into too much detail. It'll take a while to do it, but you basically use a spectrum analyzer. Uh, you need a fairly good one, and I possess one. It's in my own home laboratory, the uh, the Hewlett Packard machine there, and um, you, you need to set it up with uh, one dB per division vertical scale. You need to use video averaging because the when you start out the uh, the noise measurement's very broad over several dB. So there's a very large error band error ba band in the measurement. So you want to minimize that down. So you do video averaging and it, um, each sweep of the averaging can take 48 seconds because you're using a very narrow resolution bandwidth as well. And uh, fortunately, my spectrum analyzer, and a lot of them have this, is the uh, when you switch on a marker to measure the spot in fact, in the photograph I've taken, the marker is not visible in there, but it's a, a little highlighted dot, as you know, uh, somewhere on the trace. You, you can switch the marker into a mode called uh, noise, on or off. And when you do that, the actual marker measurement becomes a power measurement in dBm per hertz. So you just read that number straight off the screen, and that's what gets put into the formula. And uh, the result I got from the measurement minus 136.3 dBm. The gain I measured separately with a fairly accurate substitution method, um, again, using a good quality signal generator and the same spectrum analyzer, I got very good gain. And that's 
almost exactly as specified for that amplifier, 37 dB. And you get 0.53 dB. Now, that's a good figure. I'm quite happy with that figure. If you remove that 0.2 dB loss that I mentioned is in that relay in front of the LNA, then you end up with about 0.33 dB of noise figure just for the LNA on its own, which is very comparable to the stated figure by radio astronomy supplies of 0.29. There's obviously going to be a significant error band in this measurement. I have to admit that. And it could be as high as 0.2 dB. So we're in the right ballpark. This is the main thing I was concerned about. And uh, I think this, still, this is still quite an acceptable receiver to use. Um, and we'll get good results with our neutral hydrogen studies, in spite of the fact we've added this little bit of extra loss in front of the, um, the low noise amplifier by putting in this relay. But the relay gives us this incredible feature where we can calibrate every, every survey we do. We can use this noise reference. I've measured that in the past. I think I've commented on the fact that this appears to be temperature independent. The output power of that noise reference source is very, very stable with temperature. So we can constantly calibrate our receiver and get really, really good quality scientific measurements. So that, that's all I'll say on that particular one. So you can ha have read the report at your leisure. And I found it a wonderful way to measure noise figure. Believe it or not, I've never done it before. And I found it very rewarding to get that result.